is a really ugly day here in North Idaho. Uh, we we came downstairs about 3.30 this morning because we had extreme winds and uh, we're praying for the mountain boy that he wouldn't end up in Kansas. He's out there in his camper now and uh, it was quite something. It was very windy. Stuff was blowing around outside and along with heavy rains and there was snow mixed in that. So I am actually cozied up on the couch right now with a freshly brewed cup of coffee and I'm ready to chit chat with you guys. So I hope you're all doing well and that's how we're gonna start this today. I would like to know how you all are doing. Good morning, Miss Carol. Good morning, good morning. Things are crazy everywhere and everyone's got a lot going on. It's just a busy time. And I heard something the other day which I thought was really interesting. Good morning, Mr. Chad. He says, please pray for me out in the oil. Praying for you, brother. Praying for you big time. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you for taking time to join us. And thank you also for your prayers. Michelle says, just a quick hi before I drive off to work. Good morning, sunshine. Hopefully it's nice there, but I imagine you've got our nasty weather too. Carol says, hi to Chad, and of course, prayer sent. Yes, awesome. Chad says, sorry, oil field. I knew what you meant, brother. I speak your language, and my right hand is having some weird pain. Ooh, yes, praying. Maybe you have something pinched. Definitely praying for you, and uh, thank you for your message yesterday. Uh, I will recruit the mountain man and mountain boy, too, to be praying for you, Chad. Uh, Miss Deb is on. She says, good morning, Tammy and all our friends. And you guys are chit-chatting. So the question today is, how are you guys? Um, I will share about me, but I'm, I'm, I want to know about you guys today. So Chad, I'm glad you're joining. I'm glad you shared that. Um, good to know where you are. Uh, prayers were answered. Um, Deb says, raining and snow on our mountains. Uh, low with a skiff on my yard and garden early today. Yeah, we, um, Mountain Boy and I are going to go get his toolbox tomorrow. We've got snow on the top of the mountain and they are calling for snow throughout today and tomorrow and the rain and the temperature. So it's not really a good mix to be driving. I am very thankful my morning chores are done and I am nestled in here right now. Um, so yeah, it's, and the winds that are coming your way, they're quite something. We had those about, well, through the night, but 3.30, they got pretty, pretty hefty. Um, Shelly says, there's a quick break and the sun is trying to shine. Prayers for Chad. Awesome. Yeah, I think we're supposed to get a, a smidge of sun today at four o'clock. So I'm banking on that because I need a little sunshine to do afternoon chores. Um, I was chopping firewood yesterday. Shelly says, I need to leave now. I will have to watch later. Take care, everyone. Love you, lady. Have a good day. Glad you could jump on. Miss Carol, how is your abode, your home? How are you making out there? How are you all making out um, in your local stores? What are the shelves looking like? What are the prices looking like? Good morning, Miss Jane. She has made it on. She is alive and she is well. I know you've been busy. I'm glad you're here. Um, how many of you guys also saw my Instagram live yesterday? God has been prompting. I started my Monday inspiration. I'm going to do that on Instagram. Um, that was very fun. Uh, a little bit different though. When I do that, I'm just going to do it as a teaching rather than an interaction um, so that I can really cover things well. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I miss the interaction though. Um, nice Deb. She says she hasn't been shopping in a long time. That's always a good thing. I get my butter and I get cheese and I get eggs. Um, there are some look, we had a local resource for eggs since we don't have our chickens right now. And I'm not sure what happened, but it disappeared. And I have another resource for local eggs, but they're not non-GMO, so they will not settle well with me. So unfortunately, those are not an option. So um, in getting, and I also get my 
as Mountain Ben would put it, my nut juice. Um, and actually it's grain juice because I've switched to oat milk. I really love the oat milk. Um, but the cheese and the butter is just nuts. Um, I use Earth Balance butter. And because we are, uh, we have to avoid dairy in, in those lines. So um, it was like three something a tub. And I also use the Irish butter because it's processed differently. Um, but it's now five, five dollars a tub of butter. And I've always said I'll never give up butter, but man, I am trying to become a little more conservative until I get a cow or a goat again. <laughs> Because, man, that's a lot. And then the cheese was like three-something a pack for sliced cheese. Um, I forget the brand I get. But it's a non-dairy brand. It's a smoked Gouda, and it is, like, super good. And that went from three-something to five-something. But things are definitely increasing in price. Things are becoming... Certain things are harder to find. Um, a lot of the freeze-dried food companies, and I shouldn't say a lot, but I know that Augustin Farms shut down for several months because of supply issues. Um, I know Thrive Market is still thriving. Um, you can locate them by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Thrive Life. Uh, their their freeze-dried food is available and um, fairly well stocked. There's some things that are out of stock but it is pretty crazy. Um, so I wanted to encourage you guys uh, to stock up on your things for Thanksgiving a while because um, every week things are adjusting and shifting and changing and increasing in price and becoming harder to come by in, in certain things. So keep that in mind. Carol says, it's okay. Got all the heaters working. It's warmer. I'm just hoping it dries out the damp. I have cleaned all the damp off. A friend came and did it for me. Awesome. Well, I'm hoping... Did they uh, do any uh, remediation there for you, Carol? And and um, do anything to dry things out? <clears throat> and to keep it from doing it again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jane says, still a good amount of August and Farms at Walmart here. Good deal. Good deal. I just know that they had to sh shut down production. Um, Carol says, I had an amazing blessing today, guys. My electric company now know I'm classed as disabled. I passed their checks and I got a voucher for $140 to put on the electric meter. That's fantastic. That's really fantastic. And that is that like ongoing or that was just a once and done, but still that's an awesome, Hey, every penny counts, right? Put that money back into your, your preps. Uh, Carol says, I will be blasting the heaters. Thank God. Yes, see? <laughs> God answers prayers. And yes, the heat will definitely dry things out. Uh, Chad says, thank you, everyone, for your prayers. I can't stay on. Rest in his grace. God bless you all. God bless you, too. Praying for you. I'll stay and I'll check in on you. Oh, that coffee just tastes really good right now. It's just a really ugly, damp morning gonna move these closer I feel like I'm <laughs> I think I'm going blind can't see them that far but I'm also curled up on the couch here yeah so just continue to prepare forward guys lots of crazy stuff going on although one of the amazing things that we are seeing or at least that um our family is seeing is people pulling into God people sharing their faith and also People just planting their feet, standing firm. And, um, you know, it was, it's been pretty awesome to see such a pretty evident um, rally in patriotism. Um, there's a YouTube channel, um, the New Zealand Family. I know that's not their entire name. I shared one of their videos on on our community here on youtube but they've been um viewing and and um educating themselves on our history and they're just they just love learning so 
they've been diving into a lot of things, but it's pretty interesting to see um, sadly so many people overseas that are um, seeing what a blessed country we are and and just what a sad state we're in and they have greater respect for our flag and the americans our veterans than many of us here in the united states which is sad and veterans day is uh thursday and i just want to say to all of our vets out there and and their families thank you for your service without you we wouldn't have our freedoms and, um, you know, it brought tears to my eyes watching the New Zealand family's video because um, their reactions and, and their sentiments in regard to America. And, you know, it might be crumbling around us, but I love our country. I love what we stand for. I love the freedoms we have. And it's pretty awesome to see so many people rallying and also to see that um, there are people in office that still have sense and, uh, God, God will see it through, you know, God will bring the evil forward, but we just need to keep praying. We need to combat this on our knees. We need to plant our feet in our faith and our freedoms and, um, what we believe in and not give up on that. We cannot comply. We cannot comply, we cannot compromise, and we cannot become complacent. So, you know, you guys have been hearing me say that for weeks, but uh, I just want to continue to encourage that. I want to continue to encourage us to wear our faith on our sleeve and to continue to encourage us to be the light in the dark and to let Jesus come out when we're squeezed. Um Carol said it's called a winter payment once a year. It's already on the meter. Take care. Oh, take care, Chad. We love you. Awesome, Carol. That's awesome. Awesome. It's like Christmas early, right? So that's pretty awesome. And every penny does count. And um, that reminds me to share with you guys something else today, too. You know, um, I follow a bunch of different channels and they're talking about, you know, now stocking up on um, varying solar items. And we've talked about that before. But so that uh, people are prepared if the grid goes down and, um, you know, that many are, are heading toward off-grid living. And, you know, when we embarked on this journey, we, we embarked on it almost 12 years ago. And it was a time where it wasn't really well known or accepted or understood. And even still, it's not fully understood. <laughs> And, you know, people thought we were crazy. And we were following the nudge then in our hearts. You know, we just felt it very heavy on our hearts that we needed to be prepared in a different way and that we needed to be, I mean, I've always shared with you guys, you know, we've always said we, we were born 100 years too late, but I think we were born 200 years too late. Um, but you get the idea. And, you know, don't get me wrong, there are some days where it would be nice if you didn't have all the homestead chores to do and and things uh, were a little simpler, um, or I shouldn't say simpler, um, maybe quicker to attain because my life is simple, but there's like a process now to get a shower. So, you know, let's just use that as an example or to, to, you know, firewood, but regardless, I'd still have to bring in firewood, but I need to get water. I need to set things up. I need to, you know, but I would not trade what we have for anything. And I want to remind you guys that less is more, you know, as you're stocking up on things and, and you're, you know, preparing for the worst, you know, um, a lot of our peace and our comfort comes from the fact that we have less and we need less to thrive. We had a 4,800 watt, 48 volt solar system, which is very large. The average person could get away with a 24 volt system. It was a very large system. We could run everything, our washer, vacuum, 
welders, grinders, you name it. All We could run everything. We didn't have any struggles running anything on it. And we went from that to 390 watt 12 volt system. And it's just basic. It covers our basic needs. I do need to run a generator to run my washing machine and he needs to run a generator to power his tools. But we're hoping to change that in the very near future. Uh, we'd like to get a wind turbine. So we will see how things go there. But nevertheless, um, we're very minimal. And, you know, 12 years ago, that would have been a hard jump to go from on the grid to where we are now. And <laughs> Deb says, thinking of you as I just turned on my warm water in the shower and jump in easier, but not necessarily better. Right. Exactly. You know, and, and the thing is, if everything were to go to heck in a handbasket, we would be sitting in a position where we would be pretty unaffected. And that's the thing you guys want to focus on is that you want to get yourselves to a place that if things, you know, get to that place that you are pretty unaffected, you know, that you're still going to have heat, that you're still going to have water, that you have a means of growing your food, that you have a means of harvesting your, your meats. Um, and, you know, the best case scenario would be a community to connect with. And that is, you know, that's an important scenario in, um, in a situation like this, because more hands on deck, you know, part of the ship, part of the crew, it just is a different setting, but, um, less is more. And when you can get yourself to that place and, and when you can be comfortable with less is when you find a great peace and a comfort. Good morning, Mr. Keith. Mr. Keith is in New Zealand. Well, and, and Carol's in the UK. Um, Carol, I didn't ask you this, but how are things there? I know for Keith, things are pretty crazy. And Mr. Keith just got back from a really awesome hunting trip. Um, what are you seeing over there, Keith? Why don't you share with everybody here? He shared in the community last night some things um, and about his hunting trip. Uh, I want to share something I've been doing with my dogs lately. I've been doing this with Copper since the beginning of hunting season. She has a fancy orange coat now. You'll see that in my next podcast probably. Um, a lot of people, I don't know. It's better to be safe than sorry um, during hunting season because they're can be reckless hunters. There can be people that shoot at movement. There can be people that shoot without identifying. And just the fact that there's a lot of people out with high powered rifles and there's a lot of area covered. And there's also a lot of open area because of them logging out here and areas being bare of trees. So bullet can go a long way. So I always take that side of caution and I'm wearing my orange and uh, I try to get out to get my walks in and get them walked and get their exercise because they just get naughty after a while when they're not getting any form of exercise and the weather's bad. So anytime there's sunshine, we're out and we go for a hunting walk. And, you know, um, in the beginning, I didn't plan to get anything, but you carry the rifle just in case something appealing enters the scene and you do have the opportunity. But I've been using this time because I still have plenty of time to shoot my deer and my elk. We're going to go uh, black powder hunting for the elk. So I've been taking her hunting. And um, for those of you that hunt, that means that they've got to be able to listen to me uh, without me using my voice. We need to have little movement and um, we need to be quiet. And 
it has been absolutely amazing how in tune this dog is with me. She's going to be nine. And, you know, they always say you can't teach old dogs new tricks. That's a bunch of bull. She is so cool. She is so cool. And this was, this was, um, you know, Rhodesian Ridgebacks are bred to hunt lions. So it might be part of her makeup. But we went off off the, the road and, and headed in. And, you know, we'd hit ridges. And right before we get to the top of the ridge, where you would pretty much skyline yourself, <clears throat> she'd stop. And she'd just stand there and she'd look at me and allow me to look around and, and make sure nothing was present and, and then look for me to give her the okay to go. The other thing that she's been doing, which has been pretty awesome, is she's smelling and knowing what we're looking for. And if she smells something, she will stop and look at me and get my attention. Um, not to mention that she's just staying right by my side. Uh, I've got to get a little bit of the energy out of them here before I go out and do that because it's just, it's like, a, it's like a kid, you know, you got to get that excess energy out before you try to do something that's constructive. Right. So same, same applies, but it's been pretty awesome, pretty awesome. And that will serve us in a lot of different ways. Um, when you have animals on the homestead, um, it's really important that they listen and that they uh, follow commands. I like to teach her to um, follow hand commands versus my voice because the human voice carries very far. And um, also using sounds that are natural sounds so that if something is present, that they if they hear it, it's not something that spooks them. So it's been pretty awesome. It's actually really funny. And then Bowser came back home and I took them two or three days ago and it was an absolute joke. It was just ridiculous. I mean, he tried, but he didn't understand what we were doing. Yesterday, flawless, absolutely flawless. It was so awesome. <laughs> so as my father-in-law said, I have my bloodhounds now. So, you know, it serves me well. You know, if I'm out there hunting away from the guys, you know, Copper's not going to let anything happen to me. So it's pretty awesome and just a, a fun experience and also interesting to see how their own natural instincts kick in. And, uh, you know, we shoot ground squirrels here. They, they end up with the plague and it's just, and they overpopulate very quickly. So in spring, we're always shooting ground squirrels. So we're out the 22s and, and we've told her, you know, we're going to shoot. So she'll stop, wait for us to shoot, and then she'll go run and see if she can get some herself you know, but she, she's, she's very smart. So that played into this also, because if I say I'm going to shoot or I want to look at something in the scope, I'll say I'm going to shoot real softly and they stop, but it's pretty awesome. They're very in tune. They're very in tune. It's very, very cool experience. I wish I like had a GoPro or something that I could like record the process with you guys, because it's impossible to carry a camera my rifle and try to keep them under wraps at the same time. I mean, that would be like total chaos. So, so far not happening unless I can get a cameraman, which they're hard to find too, because they're going opposite directions and doing other things. Carol says my hunting is in as the superstore stealthily tiptoeing around the aisles, getting my shopping as fast as possible and out. <laughs> That's great. That is great. Carol says shelves are definitely getting more gaps, but they just stretch out some of the same products so it fills them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But just be aware. Just keep preparing forward because things are going to become, I think, more scarce. Um, <laughs> Carol says go Copper and Bowser. Isn't that funny? I just think it's so cool. Um, and that will serve us in a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different scenarios. Um, and I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful that they are that teachable. So pretty awesome. Um, Deb says, good for you, Tammy and dogs. Good dogs want to please love my two also. So smart. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And truly they do want to please. It's so funny when she gets Nixie and does something bad, you can, I mean, she's just like so apologetic. She didn't mean to. It's like, you know, it's just like, I couldn't help myself. You know, I get it. I get it. You know, we're all a little fleshly. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I'm glad to know you guys are all doing well. How can I be praying for you and what kind of praises do you have? I could, we could use some prayers for the mountain boy um, because he would, had to withdraw from his class and suggested to rec uh, recommended to him to withdraw from his class. Um, he, we're hoping temporarily lost his financial aid. Um, we applied for a withdrawal exception because of his medical. Here we go. Sorry about that. And we, we were declined. Um, so we had to put an appeal in his financial aid. And I'm hoping because of his circumstances, everything will get switched back around because he wants to continue his schooling. And um, that is an essential part of it. So if you could help us pray on that, we would greatly appreciate it. And travel mercies tomorrow would be fabulous. Oops, I'm on the wrong machine. Um, Carol says, I'm thinking of getting myself a deer stalker hat and some gum boots so I can really go stealthy. There you go. <laughs> oh, that would be great. That would be great. You, I don't know if you hear the stories over there like we do here, but there's, you know, um, a clear picture that Walmart has unique individuals shopping there. You know, you've seen them probably on, you know, social media and stuff. You'll create a, a, a new uh, scenario in your uh, store locally there. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that coffee just tastes so good. Mm. It is definitely a damp, ugly day. Yesterday, it was beautiful. It was so sunny, beautiful. I was outside doing firewood and restocking everything, but the air was crisp. We have definitely changed seasons. Definitely changed seasons. Um, thank you, Miss Carol. She says, prayers for Austin. <laughs> Carol says, I've seen them. <laughs> yes, you're going to start a new trend, Miss Carol. That's great. <laughs> oh, keep the humor, guys. The humor is definitely key. Mr. Keith is our humor in our community and here, as well as Mill and Jane. Ah, yes, it was nice. And you were in Rockford. Were you at the uh, antique store there or the, sh the little mercantile? I love that store. I haven't been in there in a long time, but I love window shopping. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> See, I knew that. They have great stuff in there. Great stuff in there. Yes, yes. Yeah, it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day. I will be traveling through there tomorrow. We're going to get the Mountain Boys toolbox tomorrow so that that is secured here for the time being. It's 73 and sunny at Epiphany Ranch and the garden I just left a week ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> I do like the cold, crisp weather, though, and I do like being out hunting. Um, one of the things that I would really like to do is get my opportunity to do some snow hunting. It just brings a new level of awe to the hunting experience when there's a lot of snow on the ground. I don't like it when the snow is crunchy on top because it makes a lot of noise, but I like being out even when it's snowing. It's just, I love, I love those opportunities. Um, I've always wondered about that, Jane. I pass that place all the time. I don't eat out much at all because there aren't too many places that I can. So um, it's usually not a thought, but I've passed, I've passed that place many times and wondered, so their clam chowder must be good. I haven't had clam chowder in forever and I didn't eat breakfast yet. You guys are going to start getting my tummy growling. Okay. Deb says Russ, Texas. Nice. Nice. Carol says when I went shopping, when I was in America, I went to Walmart. Oh my gosh. Some people's shopping carts were huge piled high. We have tiny carts here. You'd need five to make your one. Wow. No kidding. No kidding. So is it common over there, Carol, that you basically just shop for what you need for a day or two? You know, that people don't typically stock up or purchase a lot of things. You kind of shop as you need it. Is that is that how your culture is more so? Yep. Okay. I wondered. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be me. Because you see, I don't like to shop 
and I don't shop often because I don't like to shop. So when I shop, I usually have people making comments because I'll stock up on things and, um, yeah, my cart's usually pretty high. We've also already had two of those, Carol. Yeah, just to avoid having to go again. <laughs> um, Jane says, soup is all I'll eat there. Oh, okay. All right. Soup sounds good. I have some really good chicken broth here that I think I might make me up some soup this afternoon. It's a good soup day. This is good soup weather. I love soups and stews. So here's the question. I said about stocking up for Thanksgiving because you don't know, excuse me, if the um, things you will need will be available. Um, like I shared on our community yesterday, many of us are pulling from our shelves and what we have uh, stocked up. Um, we also enjoy being able to harvest, freshly harvest what we're going to put on the table that day. So that is also a plus. Um, and we've been greatly enjoying uh, deer and elk heart. I breaded elk heart last week one day. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Uh, a friend of ours doesn't eat the elk, uh, the heart and the liver, so when they fill their tags, they donate that to us. So I've been processing that and enjoying that. And, um, but what are your plans for Thanksgiving? Two or three years ago, we had beaver, mountain lion, and elk for... Thanksgiving dinner. We had a very full house. That was at the other homestead. And uh, we made the beaver and the mountain lion because our guests hadn't had it before. <coughs> so we shared that and it is absolutely amazing. Um, a lot of people don't um, realize you can eat beaver meat. Some people say it's... Um, carries disease, but um, Austin will fight you for the back straps, especially if they're barbecued. So um, good eating, but I don't know what we're going to have this year. I actually sat down yesterday. And I'm like, you know, maybe I should start thinking about this. I know I'm having cranberry chutney. That's just a given. I know we're having like this massive pot of mashed potatoes. I know we're having a sweet potato bake with marshmallows and lots of butter on top. And I know I have to have meat because I would I would be slain if I didn't have meat on the table. Um, just not sure what we're gonna have yet. So it might be fresh deer meat, it might be fresh elk meat, it might be a fresh turkey. I don't know. I don't know. We also have lots in the freezer, so we'll see. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. It hasn't hit me yet on that regard. But what are you guys having? And of course have sourdough bread. I love making my sourdough bread. I got to start my sourdough starter. Um, yes, Deb says yummy elk heart and liver. I'm envious. Yes, it's so good. Oh, so, so good. And I thought it was funny because Mr. Keith answered my question last week. I asked about um, getting enough vitamin B when you have a mutated gene and, and you're not able to do B vitamins and folate and, and uh, one of the things he recommended was bitter foods and, and liver. So I'm covering those bases pretty much right now. Um, Carol says, we don't have Thanksgiving here. It's an American thing. Yeah, I realize. Although I know for you, you have holidays. So share with us some of the things. I know you have your puddings. Um, I might have to try that this, uh, this Thanksgiving for our meal. Um, Carol shared one of her recipes with me, but share some, some of the goodies that you put on your table for your holidays. Deb says, think we are invited to Owens again in Coeur d'Alene. So maybe another visit. Yes, definitely. Let us know. Um, Jane says, I just had broth running to Costco later. If it's not there, we will do without smoked turkey or duck. We'll see. Ooh, yum. Yum. Duck is so good. I haven't had duck in a long time. Um, okay, so Carol says Christmas we have turkey roast. Okay, and um, Keith, what are some of the things you enjoy for your holidays in New Zealand? Um, what is it, Carol? Bread pudding, right? 
My brain's dysfunctioning on me. But I like making my cranberry chutney, um, anything cranberry. Uh, we used to do the canned gel cranberry. My, the, and I'm sure many of us did. That's how I grew up eating that. And I love cranberry, anything cranberry, but I like making my own. And the chutney is fermented, so it's really good. Um, and I also, uh, one of the things I also look forward to is making my own uh, sauerkraut for New Year's. Um, yes, Yorkshire puddings, that's what it is, with a roast and and uh, dinner and gravy. Nice, nice, nice. Very nice. Um, Deb says I might have to dig out my goose breasts and fix something special. Yum. Yum. And I imagine you'll get to spend it with Sterling. So that'll be nice. We will have a full house. I believe Mountain Ben is returning. The mountain boy will be here. You know, I'm really excited. Um, one of the topics for today is finding joy in the meaningless and you know sometimes we take so much for granted you know in our day-to-day -day. and I have to tell you I also saw Mill share this and it's exactly how I'm feeling this year is just that she's so excited for Christmas this year because she will be able to celebrate it the way she wants to in her new place and she can celebrate it for what it is and, you know, I am just so excited this year, too. Um, it just feels different. It is different. It's, And I'm excited, you know, to have my family together for Christmas. You know, Austin came home last year. But it's just different when you're all here together. And I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for my family. I'm very grateful to have a good man. I'm very grateful that my boy is, you know, grown up, but he, he missed home. He missed the lifestyle. He missed the simplicity. And, um, you know, he views things differently, you know, um, just having that respect for the meaningless, you know, the things that you took for granted. Um, okay. Carol says sauerkraut's not really used there. I, I love sauerkraut. Homemade sauerkraut is the absolute best. Carol says, they're sa saying here we might have to use masks and keep distance again. Yeah, I'm sure um, there's all kinds of uh, control trying to settle back in. Miss Jane says, repairman is scheduled to arrive today with a part for my oven. May not even have an oven. Oh my goodness. Your appliances are all going to heck in a handbasket. The oven, the washer, didn't the dryer go too? And your washer was brand new. Did you get a new one? I think it was the washer, right? Jane says, I'd rather go to Canada and be grateful. In <laughs> right, right. I'll tell you. Our world is really crazy right now, guys, but keep your humor and 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 make life what you want it to be. Find pleasure in the meaningless. Find pleasure in the mundane. Um, Carol says, if they try another lockdown over Christmas again, I think there will be a mutiny. Um, you know, that's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take, you know. Um I was thankful to see that our government is fighting back against these big mandates for the vaccines. So, you know, there's hope for us yet. Uh, but it's really awesome to see the rallying that's happening. It, it makes my heart happy. Um, just, you know, don't want to lose what we fought so hard for, you know. And, and you guys don't want to lose any more. So... I'm going to read some stuff here since I was talking about the meaningless. It's called, it's called Finding Joy in the Meaningless. Ecclesiastes 2.11. When I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. In, 2000 and, in 2010, James Ward, the creator of the blog, I Like Boring Things, launched a conference called A Boring Conference. Ooh. What? I got to pause. I'm losing power. And I don't want to lose you guys. So 
think it froze. Who did it froze? Did it freeze? <laughs> Hello. Hang on, guys. Hello. There we go. Okay. Let's try this again. A boring conference. I think this is great. Um, so it's one day, a one day celebration of the mundane, the ordinary, and the overlooked. In the past, speakers have addressed seemingly meaningless topics like sneezing, sounds that vending machines make, and inkjet printers of 1999. Ward knows the topics may be boring, but the speakers can take a mundane subject and make it interesting, meaningful, and even joyful. I know that we have three people specifically in this community, four actually, that could do the same thing. We've got Mill, Carol, Keith, and Jane. <laughs> oh. Anyway, several millennia ago, Solomon, the wisest of kings, launched his own search for joy in the meaningless and mundane. He pursued work, bought flocks, built wealth, acquired singers, and constructed buildings. Some of these pursuits were honorable and some were not. Ultimately, in his pursuit of meaning, the king found nothing but boredom. Solomon maintained a worldview that didn't press beyond the limits of human experience to include God. Ultimately, however, he realized that he'd find joy in the mundane only when he remembered and worshipped God. When we find ourselves in the whirlwind of tedium, let's launch our own daily mini conference as we remember our creator the god who fills the mundane with meaning as we remember and worship him we'll find wonder in the ordinary gratitude in the mundane and joy in the seemingly meaningless things of life how many of you find happiness in the simplicity and simple things of life i know i do i just find i get I really enjoy the simplicity. I enjoy homestead chores. You know, I, I do find that there's a lot of people that enjoy doing firewood. I love chopping firewood. I love being outside and doing those, those things, you know, the, the re repetition of the daily routine. But in that daily routine, I've got dogs and cats that uh, are like by my side tripping over me, tripping over things to make sure I'm protected. I still think the cat would rip eyeballs out if somebody ever came after me. He's so funny. I find heart-shaped rocks. I see eagles. I, you know, the mundane is so awesome um, because in the mundane is when really good things happen. Keith says, watch part two when I put it up and you will see the range of meats at my camp. Only the whisper of the wind and not an idiot for miles. <laughs> I love you. I love you. You have the best sediments. It's so awesome. Yeah, it sounded really enticing, Keith. Keith just um, did a pack trip back into hunt to his hunting camp and uh, sounded amazing. Right up my alley, in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Carol said they're also saying they now have a pill if you have COVID to take. Oh, wow. Yeah. They've got a pill for everything. Carol says, well, Keith, maybe we should all come to your house. Yep. Jane says the washer is still not repaired. The part was on back order. Imagine. Four repair companies, only one actually pulled the back off and found why the drum is banging into the cabinet. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find good help these days. Jane says they replaced the thermos, thermistor or probably thermostat control board pump. Now a new sprocket and some other part that is cracked. I'm so over this. Uh, yeah, Wow. Uh, Carol says, wow, Jane, it must have been cheaper to buy a new one. It was a new one, right? Um, Jane says, LG should have replaced. It's, it's stays with the house. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, my gosh. That's terrible. That is terrible. But how many of you guys find pleasure in the meaningless? You know, um, sometimes just sitting and hanging out with my guys, we might all be doing something different, but we're in the same space. Um, you know, a lot of what I do is repetition. A lot of what I do um, is the same, but I find great pleasure in it, um, especially in what I'm being called to do. Um, 
Wow. I pray my 3540 washer never quits. That's years old. Hopefully it's not something simple like a rubber band around the drum. Right, Carol? <laughs> well, and it's terrible when they make a new machine and then they don't have anybody to service it. Wow. There you go, Deb. Honestly, I want one of the old ringer washers. They're just hard to find um, a nice one that hasn't been used as a planter. I want to actually use it. Rhonda says, good morning. Just got in from a store run. Harvey found a Clint Eastwood movie to watch while I was away. Oh, those are the best. If the mountain man was here, he would do his good, bad, and ugly. But he's not in right now, so that's not going to happen. But I love when he does that. <laughs> oh. Miss Rhonda, I'm glad you're on here. We are praying for you and Harvey and Harvey's mom. And um, I did ask you guys, how can I be praying for you guys? Um, Jane says, yes, Ringer is what I'll be searching for in Ecuador. Awesome. So are things lining up, sweet friend? Are you still planning to make your trip in the new year? I hope it's coming fast. That's probably why the year is going so fast, because Jane is like praying it away so that she can get to Ecuador, right? I would be. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Deb says, and a good Sam Elliott Western. Yeah, Sam Elliott, Clint Eastwood. Yep, yep. Sam Elliott's a classic. Uh, who's the other one? Um, oh. I can see his face. I just can't think of his name. Oh. Dang it. He sings too. Oh, that's going to drive me nuts now. Waterworld. Waterworks. He was in. Ah. He's been in a lot. I can't think of what it is. It'll come to me. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Jane says, leaving on a jet plane, don't know when I'll be back again. Yes. Tom Selleck's another good one. Yep, that wasn't the one I was thinking of. Um, no, not Dean Martin. Um, and these aren't old. He's not. Dances with Wolves. Uh, now, now I know you got. Yes, thank you. Deb just jumped in on it. Kevin Costner. Yes, yes. Yeah. His are good, too. And Mel Gibson. I like some of his stuff, but they're not Westerns. But anyway. We just went off on a, a bunny trail, but I have another one I want to read to you guys. Um, this is pretty good. Uh, Acts 14, 17. He never left them without evidence of himself. Do you believe there is a God who made all things, including you? Yes. Then you're blessed. On the other hand, if you don't believe in God, try to make an eye, an ear, or a brain. Only make one from nothing, or create a flower that can produce nectar, which can be collected by bees you made and make them transform it into honey for you to eat. You breathe in life-giving oxygen released by trees, then you breathe out carbon dioxide, giving the trees what they need for your, their survival. Brilliant, right? And since atheists believe all this came into being without an intelligent guiding power, there was no mind behind creation. Imagine having your brain removed and then being asked to create it. Perhaps that's why the majority of people in a Newsweek poll said they believe in God. So what about the tiny 3 to 5% who claim to be atheists? Are they just smarter than the rest of us or are they missing some apparent evidence? An atheist is defined as someone who doesn't believe in God. But since it is impossible to prove scientifically that something doesn't exist, atheists can't know for sure that there is no God. Their view is based solely on the lack of evidence. However, believing there is no God doesn't mean one does not exist. The Bible says he never left them without evidence of himself and his goodness. For instance, he sends you rain and good crops and gives you food and joyful hearts. The evidence is all around us. God's existence can be proved and you can have a personal relationship with him. I thought that was very good and I wanted to read that because I wanted to remind you guys, if you guys have not 
seen last week's live, go back and watch the beginning because God is working miracles all around us. Um, and he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So, you know, it's pretty amazing what God does in our lives, his presence, the miracles he's been working in and amongst our community. And I want to share with you guys, I'm going to do something special in our community. If you're not part of our community, go to treyerwilderness.com slash community. Um, and if you'd like to watch it independently, uh, Pure Flix is airing God's Not Dead, We the People, I think till the 21st. And um, I'm going to do an airing of that in our community if I can pull it off. Um, fabulous movie. The Mountain Boy and I watched it on Saturday. <clears throat> and it was amazing. It's very, very amazing um, since we were talking about movies, but also, you know, the existence of God. You know, so many people argue it because they they can't see, you know, but you can't see the wind. And, but it's still there, you know, and I'm very grateful to have God in my life. I couldn't imagine my life without it. I got you guys on a yes, yes. Carol says Sam Elliott in Roadhouse. Yes, please. <laughs> and Patrick Swayze, right? <laughs> I love it. Everybody's on a movie turn. So Charles Bronson was my idol when I was young. There you go. Yep. And Dev says we just watched part of Dances with Wolves when Sterling was home. He barely remembered it. That's how little we, he was. Oh, how little we watch TV and movies. Right. Our thing is just movies. We don't have TV, but we watch movies. And growing up, I was a major, major movie buff. So I enjoyed watching movies all the time. Um, Mill says, good afternoon, my Treyer family. Blessings to all. Good afternoon, beautiful lady. Jane says, those are my times of nothingness as sit and watch bees in my garden, birds, dogs, seeds, Seed to vegetables for my table is, is so amazing. I know, right? I know. I love, truly, I love being outside, you know, um, and every opportunity I get, I am out there. Today is one of those days where I'm going to have to hunker, which is kind of good because it'll put me into my writing mode and into my designing mode because I'm working on two new books. So I'm excited about that. Uh, Miss Mill says my cabin is sold. <laughs> yes. How awesome is that? Two days on the market and they had to cancel showings. God totally took care of us. <laughs> There's another miracle. As I was saying, how God is working miracles. There you go, sister. That is fantastic. God answers prayers. And you know what, girl? God just blessed you for your obedience and your non-compliance. God bless you guys. That's awesome. I'm celebrating with you. That is such a huge praise. I want you guys to pray for Tammy also. I thought of her earlier when I said something. And Kelly and Mike and Courtney too and Bobby. Um, but Tammy is busy getting her house ready for the market and is just insanely crazed. So please pray for her for strength and also for her house to sell quickly. And uh, Mill, that just makes my heart sing. I'm so excited for you. And uh, I haven't heard from Kelly, so I'm not sure how they're doing. But please continue to pray for Bobby. She's been so heavy on my heart. And she was not in a good way um, these last couple of weeks because of things going the way they have for her. Just nothing positive is happening. And she's losing hope. So please pray for her. And Mill, I would love to catch up with you then. Um, maybe not today, but maybe Friday or something um, when it works for us. Um, to chat with you about um, Glenn Beck and connecting there because I really would like to see something happen for this girl. Um, Mill ask Rhonda how Harvey is doing, still praying for a speedy recover, recovery. Carol says, yes, Mill, so happy for you. Yay, yeah, exactly. And Jane says, Mill, that's great. Rhonda says, praise the Lord, Mill. I was going to check in and see how that was going. Rhonda also said he's doing, uh, Harvey's doing great. Sorry, guys, I heard something. Um, Nia's feeling good and has only taken Tylenol since yesterday. No RX. Yes. Praise God for that. Um, Deb says, congrats to Mill. That's awesome. Carol says, 
Have you got a place to go, Mill? Oh, yeah. Mill's all nestled into the top of her mountain in Colorado. She's doing good. They they had that prior to selling their cabin, so they are in good shape. Um, Mill says, definitely we'll be praying. And uh, Deb says, awesome, Rhonda, for Harvey and his healing. Carol says, good news, Rhonda. Yes, God is good. God is doing amazing things. Um, Keith, this reminds me... Um, I'm going to email you later because I have a bunch of questions for you, a whole bunch. They've been compiling. Um, and being it's a rainy day and I am in here, I'm going to shoot you an email with my questions. But one I did want to ask while we're all on here, if you are still present, is um, pain meds. What do you use in New Zealand for pain meds? We have um, wild lettuce that I, I like to use. Um, I don't use RX. I don't like to use Tylenol. Um, there's a lot of different things that can be used. Cat's claw. Um, but I'm just curious, just curious what you would share. Um, Jane says, throw me some prayers, Thursday surgery at 8am praying for you, sister, praying heavily for you. And, um, I am going to visit my hair lady. Uh, I don't go to her very often. I went to her earlier in the year to help get these bangs in check because they were, I didn't have bangs and suddenly did, but I hadn't seen her for like three years, something like that. But it looks like I have a lot, but there's not a whole lot left and it is just coming out in handfuls. When I get a shower, it is quite creepy um, because i I brush my hair every day. Every day I get a brush full. But when I get a shower, I brush my hair before I get in the shower. I lose a lot in the shower when I'm washing my hair. And when I get out and I pick my hair and then use a comb, a wide tooth comb on my hair, I get a whole, I mean a hearty handful of hair. And when I wet my hair to wash it, it's like there's nothing there. It's really creepy. So you may see... Um, You may see some changes in the hair because I'm either not going to have any and I'm going to go like um, really short or out of necessity or I don't know, but things are happening and I feel for Jane, you know, Jane was asking for prayer and we were praying, but you just can't imagine until you experience it yourself. It's quite something. It's quite something. Keith, I have another question for you. You know, for those of us that are losing hair as a result of COVID, it was because of the stress it put on our body. When we get sick with something like that, because what amazes me is my body went through so much stress over the last seven years, and specifically seven years ago. I mean, I was, uh, a week later, I, I wouldn't have been visiting with you guys today. Um, so it amazes me that, uh, you know, and I was losing hair then, but nothing like this. I mean, this is insanity. So I, I know in my mind that one of the ways to keep us from being stressed through illness is keeping ourselves in a good headspace, um, probably heavy breathing, um, and, and keeping the body calm. But what are your thoughts on that? Is there something that we can do and that we can um, put in place to combat um, this kind of situation? I'm curious. I would. I, I love uh, pulling as much information from you as I can. You are just such a wealth of information. Interesting, Carol. Um, Carol says here is paracetamol and ibuprofen. I wonder what the first one is. I've never heard that before, so I want to look that up. I just did a screenshot. Um, Jane says, I visited mine last week. She chopped it off again. No kidding. Are you real short? You have to send me a picture. I'm like, I'm like talking Demi Moore in her one movie. What was that? G.I. Jane? <laughs> I mean... I've never, I've never, like some people can wear really short, short, buzzed 
women can do their hair that way and look really good because they have thin necks and stuff. I've never gone that short. I've had the side shaved and, and long and stuff, but I've never, and I've, I've cut, cut it above shoulder length, but I've never been brave enough to go that route. But if I start getting really bad, you know, if it's to the point I, and I don't know how it's not there already that I don't have clumps of hair missing in the back of my head or something thing because there's just not it looks like a lot but it is so thin and so there's like it's crazy so if I get to that point I'm definitely gonna do that then I'll know what I look like and we'll experience it but um the mountain man likes long hair and I mean so do I so I'm praying that that doesn't happen but um it is quite something Deb says at least it's winter and hats are good. It will it'll grow back. Yeah, I'm not really. You know what? It's really funny. I'm I'm not really worried about it, uh, but it is it is something to experience. Um, that is for sure. And, um, you know you know I roll. Oh, thanks, Rhonda. Uh, she says paracetamol is Tylenol in the U.S. Okay, thank you. I didn't know that. Um. You guys know me, I roll, and my 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 saying is, it is what it is, you know, and God has purpose in it all. I'm hoping that I can come up with answers so that other people can maybe beat it, and if they get COVID, that they don't end up with the hair loss because I've figured something out, you know, kind of thing. Um, plus, I don't know, I, I am feeling that my hair is actually healthy, like, like the healthy hair is what's remaining, so I don't know. Because my hair has definitely been different over the last seven years um, just because of all the toxins in my system. So it might grow back nicer. Who knows? But I'm not really worried about it. I have all kinds of hats. And like I said, I, I said it last week. I forget who was on with us. I'm trying to remember who I said that to. But anyway, I said maybe God is doing this so that I can make um, really pretty babushkas that can... Uh, um, also be your, your new tinfoil hat, you know, so that there's purpose in this. I'm supposed to make some kind of a headpiece or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's all good. It'll be what it'll be. And I like wearing hats and I've got many and it'll all be good. I'm curious to see your picture though, Jane, you got to send me one. And funny that you did that. Cause I've been com contemplating it. Um, Carol says, Deb, maybe we should all send her a different hat each there we go that'll be yeah so it'll be the new the the hat of the week that's funny we'll have fun with it i know we will i'm not worried about it but i am i am curious uh, my curiosity is always the thing in my desire to know and to dig deep and to help others so that always prevails over everything else you know as far as losing my hair. I've got my nice big earrings. It will be no confusion that I am a woman, um, regardless what length of hair I have, you know, so it's all good. Um, Carol says, I used to be able to sit on my hair years ago. I cut it really short. Wow. I've gotten really close to that um, over the last seven years with my hair being that long. Oh, Rhonda says I didn't either. I looked it up. Okay. Yeah, because I was curious. And that's that just shows I I am such a sponge for knowledge. And I want to connect the dots. And I want to solve things, you know. Um, Mill says my husband said if my hair falls out, he'll still keep me. <laughs> Gee, thanks, I think, lol. <laughs> well, it was really funny. I came in from <clears throat> the bathhouse the other night. And Glenn looks at me and he goes, what? And I just opened my hand. I brought the big wad of hair in. And he's like, it'll grow back. And it, it fun, you know, and he's like, we'll deal with it as it comes. It's like, and, but it's just funny. I wasn't like, I was just like shocked, you know, because I've just, it's, it's something. It's very something. But it was just funny. We're so in tune. He knows my, as I said last week, the post lady and I are going to get t-shirts that say my face, not, my mouth may not have said it, but my face just did because my face is so readable and I can't hide it. So, um, and that's good that you're a keeper, Mel. I, 
you know, Glenn is all, I actually had to get permission to cut my hair a little shorter a couple years back. And he, you know, put a mark on my back, not literally, but you know, with his fingers, he touched, he's like, no shorter than that. Well, she cut it there when it was wet. So when it dried, it was up quite a bit higher. He's like, I told you down there. I'm like, well, I did. <laughs> so he does like my long hair. Most guys do. So just funny. It'll be what it'll be. It'll be what it'll be. Um, Jane says, oh, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. Mill says, Carol, will you post those pics on the community? I would love to see them. There you go. Yes. Uh, Jane says, like I said, amazing that my hair on my head falls out, but not anywhere else. Right? Exactly. I know. I'm just thankful to have eyebrows, you know? I didn't have eyebrows for quite a few years. Now I have eyebrows. Now I just don't won't have any hair. <laughs> oh, if it would only all be, come in together, right? Um, Carol says, I can post the proofs. I got mill, of course. Um, Jane says, uh, Carol, yes, put on the community. There you go. You got, and it's it's been really awesome. There's a lot of activity on the community. So get over there and start chitter-chattering. Share your recipes. Share what's happening. Um, Deb says, you're still gorgeous and it doesn't show that you've lost hair. Well, that's good. And thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I, you know, we're, we're, we're beautiful from the inside out. That's my goal. So it's all good. It'll be what it'll be. And, um, I am thankful that it is winter time and that there are hats, or I should say that there are hats because it's winter time because, um, you know, I cut the guys, well, Glenn cuts his own hair, Austin, I cut Austin's hair and, you know, we gave him a really good trim for his job and the, the back and sides are all, you know, uh, buzz cut it. And so he's, ha he's wearing his hats cause his head gets cold. So, you know, at least I have all kinds of hats. I can do some experimenting. Um, Mill says, awesome, Carol. Also very happy they take care of your heat issue. Big deal. Yeah, that is a big deal. That's really awesome. And every penny helps right now. Big time. Jane says, Mill, my hubby's the same. Wonder, wonder loving man. <laughs> Carol says, thank you, Mill. And your sale on your property. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Mill says we scored, Jane. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Good men are hard to come by. Men, real men are hard to come by today. I'm very excited that we all have them. Um, Keith says they use the same crap here, but I learned pain control from living in different cultures. So I use massage to treat women and they go to sleep and it takes the pressure off. Awesome. Yeah, my deep muscle therapist. I was just curious. I just didn't know also if you had any plants or herb advice. So I just thought I'd ask. Um, Jane says, yep, we did. Uh, Mill says, Tammy T, you would be a gorgeous baldy. <laughs> Why, thank you. It'll be what it'll be. It'll be interesting to see. But I'm, I just, I keep thinking about it and chuckling because it's going to be, if, if I do do something, or have to do something or choose to do something, it's going to be very drastic. So you, it'll be like going from this to the next day, not having any hair at all. So no, no in between stuff. Why bother doing that? Mill said, Keith, I seen you had some more protesting going on over there. Yeah. And Carol's anticipating it too, because they're looking at more, uh, lockdowns, masks, distancing, um, Carol says they want to see Lorenzo's school pictures. You missed it, lol. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yes, I want to see those too. Yeah, I did miss that. I didn't see anybody say anything about that. He's such a ham bone. I miss seeing his pictures. I'm sure you miss them just as much. Yes, exactly, Mill. Yes, must emphasize real men. Very thankful that our community has real men, you know, it's, it's hard to come by and it's, it's, you know, it's just such a shame. Um, our culture is just so jaded, but I am thankful and I praise all you good men out there. Take good care of your wives and your women and 
Thank you for being a real man. You know, chivalry is still appreciated despite some of the population's opinion. And um, it's a good feeling to have a good man. Uh, it's very comforting to have a good man. And, and you know, today's society is such a throwaway society. And that's not just um, material things, you know. Um, where did I see that written? Oh, a friend of mine posted on Instagram. Um, it's funny because we were talking about... Um, submission last week or the week before and she put a a post out and she said I'm trying to remember how she worded it but she said that she and her husband have been through some really hard stuff you know that they walk through times that they didn't like each other and didn't want to be with each other but because of their commitment to their marriage they worked through it and she says if only other people would stay in it long enough to be able to work through those times because on the other side of that there's a really wholesome level of respect and unity and but our world is such a throwaway society and 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 that is another thing not to mention the fact that you know our world and our government view wants to nix the family and family unit and and penalize us for being a family it's so crazy so you know we know what our values are we know what we want in life we know what the freedoms are that have been worked so hard for let's keep them let's keep things in place and let's fight for what we believe in guys um Hmm. Carol says, yes, I miss him tons, but he video calls me all the time so I can watch TV with him or he plays with his monster trucks and I watch. Oh, that's so funny. That's so cute. You've got an amazing bond there with that young man. That'll just be awesome as he grows. Mill says, my husband likes to remind me of his macho every now and again. Lol. Right. I know. I know. That's funny. I can say mine does too. <laughs> Carol says, I wouldn't know what a real man was if he slapped me in the face. Well, that's a shame. That's a shame. They're out there, though. They are out there. And we are very, I am very blessed to have a good, and not only a good and a real man, but a godly man. And I'll tell you what, that makes a big difference. Um, another thing my friend said is that they fought. And they fought hard. But the difference is they didn't fight. They fought for each other, not against each other. And that's what comes with a real man and a godly man. And when you put that kind of value on your marriage vows, that you are fighting for your marriage, not against it. Because oftentimes what happens is people start fighting and the fighting and the fighting and it just it's a division that never um, returns. But when you're fighting for your marriage... You might not see eye to eye, but you're fighting to keep it, not fighting to, to lose it, you know, and it's pretty huge. It's pretty huge. Carol, I pray that someday you find a real man and that you are treated like you should be by a real godly man, too. There's power in that. Gosh, there's power in that. Key says, yes, Mill, they want everyone vax, so big protests. Yeah. It's just crazy. It's so crazy. Ah, uh, you know, I was saying previously how I was so angry, you know, that the, the emotion that had been getting spurred was anger and I'm glad I've processed through that. It's not anger anymore. I just shake my head and laugh because it's really ludicrous. The things that are happening. I wanted to share something with you guys. Um, this was, I, I don't, I, I'm processing so much information every day because I just continue to research so much stuff. But, and I don't remember the source, but it was stated that the enemy is not only trying to attack us, you know, the enemy was trying to use my emotions to get me spurred up, to get me angry, to get me to break, to get me to a place where when I'm squeezed, Jesus is not what's coming out. You know, that used to be my nature. I was. I was reactive when I was younger and, um, and like I said, you know, I cursed like a sailor, so it wasn't Jesus that was coming out. Um, 
And when that woman the other day, this was a perfect example that when that woman the other day was shoving that mask box in my face and being absolutely ignorant and rude, I stood my ground, but I wasn't ignorant to, back to her. I just blat blatantly let her know that I didn't like her disrespect and that I did not like her ignorance. But I didn't, I didn't stoop to her level and the enemy was trying really hard to get me to, you know, for, for probably a month and a half, anger was just spurring me over and over again with the crazy stuff that's going on and just the, the condition of our country and other countries and our, <laughs> our government and everything else. And now I've processed through to another area and I'm grateful for that. And that's what, that's what God helps us to do is progress to the wholesome place, even though the enemy is testing. The enemy was testing me hard. He was trying to find another foot in, and he can just go pound sand. There ain't a foot in here because I'm paying attention. But, but yeah, it's just, it's crazy. So, you know, I'm still paying attention to what's happening. I'm still seeing things for what they are. But at the same time, there's just such a level of, humor in it to see how other people are behaving and what they're doing and and that so keep praying for our government pray that the evil comes out and that god uses uses their i don't even know what word to put on it oh just their pathetic attempts at killing our country you know that evil for the good um praying for you keith I hope that you are far enough from these protests and far enough from danger from these situations. Um, Carol says, Keith, we have parents pulling their kids out of school so they don't get the COVID jab. Praise, excuse me, praise God. I would not want my kids in school. I mean, the, just the thought of any child in school right now dealing with what is going on. Um, excuse me, it's just insane. My grandbabies, that scares me because I don't think that they're thinking, I don't believe they have the same thought process I do. Um, yeah, so that just whole thought is just really disturbing. Our children, we need to protect our children. Uh, thanks, Carol. Carol says, hit the like button, guys. Yes, please. Thank you. Hit the like button. Leave your comments on uh, reviewing this later when we're not live. And uh, if you're new to us, subscribe. We've got so many new people joining us, and it's been so awesome to see how God is leading people to our channel. Last week we had, oh, I can't think of her name. Oh, I think it was Stephanie, but it, it, it ends in a Y, a y I think. I know she joined our community, and I'm just totally drawing a blank right now. But I'm so excited to see her. Her comment was that she's so thankful that God led her to us last week because she needed it. Through you guys commenting, liking, subscribing, we are we are really connecting with people with our message. So keep doing that. If you're new, join our community, treyerwilderness.com slash community. Um, join our Bible study. That didn't come out right, but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, TryYourWilderness.com slash Bible Study Book Club. Also, join the Kids Corner if you have children. Speaking of children, get them in our Kids Corner. We've been doing some really cool stuff. Um, TryYourWilderness.com slash Kids Corner. Kids Corner is Fridays at 2.30 Pacific Standard Time. Bible Study is normally... 5 30 thursday evenings uh pacific standard time however i have to cancel this week due to family um requirements so that will not be this week uh we do have a new book starting december 2nd so i think it's december 2nd yes so join us bible study um really good book coming all of them have been really amazing um very foundational very um nurturing and growing. Um, Keith says, same here, Carol. Some of the rural schools are closing as teachers quit. I saw that. I saw that. That's, that's awesome. I mean, not awesome for our kids, but 
awesome that people are taking this stand and that our kids may be lacking right now or you may need to homeschool right now and maybe that's not your desire but it will be a better scenario for our children moving forward so praise god for that um carol says we have high up surgeons doctors nurses police all quitting over it i'm so glad to hear that i am just so glad to hear that that people are just finally tired of things um and and standing firm standing tall standing together that is the greatest thing is standing together so for those of you that had to um go to uncomfortable places in our community and you've had to walk away from things if you need something, please reach out to me. Survive at treyerwilderness.com because we want to hold you up. Um, we need to support one another. We need to help one another in this time. And we need to we need to do it together. Um, Mill says a communist tactic is to poke you till you're angry and reactivate. Yep, exactly. It gives them the excuse to clamp down harder. So let's not give our enemy ammunition. Amen. Uh, we were talking about that last week. You know, keep pressing into God so that when you are squeezed, Jesus comes out because that's what they're looking for is us to break. They want us to break. They want us to pull guns. They want a, an excuse. They want an excuse to come and pull in and tighten the reins. So amen, Mel. Amen. Um, Deb says, I'm at it. I'm at school job and been a bit sidetracked. No worries. We're glad you're on here, though. Leroy Schrock, thank you for joining us. He says, the best things in life are not things. Amen. Amen. Where are you joining us from, Leroy? And glad to have you joining us. Um, join our community. Tryerwilderness.com slash community. We've pulled away from social media so that we have a place to fellowship and not have to worry about censorship not have to worry about anybody anything so come join us deb says we'll listen again good stuff right here good community i love it i love it and i needed this today i was really tired i still am tired that waking up at three o'clock to heavy winds and going to bed too late i was researching and i couldn't put it down i've got to stop that um so Mill says, I want to ask, I want to ask about Austin. Yes. Um, what would you like to know? Uh, I see Carol's welcoming Leroy and, um, Mill says, howdy to Deb. Um, Mountain Boy is here. He's doing well. Uh, so if you have a question, feel free to ask. And, um, I hope to get him on an interview. He finally has his schedule now. He'll be working, unfortunately, Sundays, but, um, it'll all work out fine. Um, he's working Sundays and Mondays and Fridays and Saturdays. So he's very much liking his job. He's off training. He was on his own yesterday and um, really is enjoying. They have him as a checker. So he's a, a full-time, well, part-time checker. Um, he's a day away from full-time, but he's enjoying it very much and um, grateful, very grateful for the job. And I'm excited. My pap used to work. My pap did all kinds of different stuff. Um, he was a milkman. He delivered the milk bottles into the um, milk boxes and the milk crates out on people's porches for a long, long time in Pennsylvania. And he drove car carrier for some time. I didn't. I I don't remember that. I just know it. But he was at a grocery store, and he just loved being with people. He his goal was always to make them feel better when they left than they did when they arrived and i can see my son doing the same thing so it's pretty cool um carol says sorry guys gotta go lorenzo wants me to hear his bedtime story law take care guys love hugs prayers for you all love you too ladies stay safe keep uh doing your uh muck boots at the grocery store and give lorenzo a hug tell him we said hello okay love you lady Stay in touch in the community. Share your share your pictures. All right. Mill says, have a great evening, Carol. Love you, sister. Yes. 
All right. So, Mill, you had a question about Austin. What did you want to know about Austin? I will be happy to share. Um, we are working out details on his camper, trying to um, get him some constant power. He needed to wait on a paycheck so that he could purchase himself. The milkman delivery guy was my grandfather, my pap. Um and he loved that job too. And one of the fun things growing up as a kid is I got to go in the milk truck with him sometimes. So pretty awesome. My pap was a neat man. I really liked him. I really connected with him. Um, but with Austin, he's hoping to get some solar and a wind turbine um, so that he can keep his batteries charged. And the battery is required for his heater, for the fan, and to ignite it as well as his refrigerator. So... Um, he needs to get things in place right now. He's using a Mr. Heater in his camper and it takes up so much room. So it's a little, um, bit of a pain, but he's, he's happy. Uh, today is his first day off. Well, no, that's not true. He had off Saturday, but today's a day off and then he has tomorrow and Thursday off. So he's going to be getting himself all hooked up over there and fine tuned because he kind of just got shoved in there and then started his work schedule. So, um, but he's got a nice spot over there and the deer and the elk are all roaming around his camper. So I've saw all the tracks yesterday. So he's getting uh, itchy to get his hunting license. Yeah, he really likes his new job, uh, Mill. He he's enjoying it, um, and he enjoy he enjoys working with people. He really enjoyed working at AutoZone. You know, he he thought AutoZone was it. He really liked it a lot. Um, he is finding that he was um, now that he's working here that he was dealing with a very different group of people. Um, you know, a lot of people there were not afraid to be rude and ignorant and he had people hang up on him on the phone. You know, he had to do a lot of the phone work, which was good for him. Um, phone is not his thing. Um, but the connections were always bad either because of people's cell phone or the, the phone up there was really sketchy and, you know, he'd have people F bombing him and calling him all kinds of names and hanging up on him. And, and here at the store, he hasn't really run into that yet. Now I've seen, I've, I've been in line and witnessed people being ignorant to the checkers. So his time will come, but I know when he, when squeezed, uh, he'll, he'll do fine. Um, but he likes it. He likes it a lot. So he was very tired when he got home last night. <laughs> um, Deb says, yeah, that would have been awesome. Sharing time with Pap, delivering, serving others. Love it. Yeah. And he loves serving people. He loved serving people. He loved just nurturing, nurturing. And, you know, he always wondered how people, people were doing. And it wasn't out of, you know, the need to know, like he genuinely cared that, and that's just how he always came off. And I love that about my pap. So yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool experience to have that time with him. I miss him a lot. Um, I've shared before with you that, you know, I'd come down at their house when I'm visiting and he'd be sitting at the table, either praying over his Bible or reading his Bible. And that has stuck with me so much. And every morning I've really gotten into a ritual of, um, just enjoying my mornings with God. And I think of him every day. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Deb says, glad I am here with earbuds in my ear, listening to good stuff and trying to not hear what teachers are sharing about COVID, et cetera. Not on their page at all. Doing my best for the couple hours here. Yeah, it's hard when you have to surround yourself with people that are not of the same mind. Thankfully, I am in a position where I can choose not to do that. And that's also why I choose not to leave my homestead very often. <laughs> um but let me tell you, I value, I absolutely value my time with you guys. And I mentioned it earlier. I started a new thing yesterday on Instagram. Every Monday, I haven't decided on the time yet. I will announce that. Um, but I, because I'd like to do early mornings. I'm thinking 7.30 Pacific Standard Time. Um, I just got to see what the mountain man thinks of that. <laughs> um because he's not a morning person. I am. Um, I mean, but we're up by that hour. It's just, it. 
he likes his quiet. Can't blame him. So I will have to see what time. But anyway, I'm, I'm doing Monday Inspiration on Instagram Live. And what I'm doing is I'm just doing a teaching. I'm not interacting. Uh, although I can see your comments coming across the screen. And I am greatly trying to pay attention to that. Um, because unlike here, I can't go back into the live chat and see what people are saying. So, um, I am trying to pay attention while I'm on there, but I'm just not interacting because I want it to be, I'm reading the word, I'm reading the word. I'm going to be reading from the Bible on Mondays. So it's Monday inspiration on Instagram. So, uh, be aware of that. It will notify you that I'm live. And like I said, I will announce the time in the community and probably here on the community too, just so that more people can join. Just felt very, very nudged yesterday. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to be doing that again, but I do need to conserve my time and, and myself. A little bit of self care is involved in this too. Um, because I think before was a little bit too much for me. Um, and uh, after COVID, everything went to heck in a handbasket. So I'm just trying to do keep myself in mind, but also wanting to spend more time with you guys. Uh, but with that being said, I am going to jump off of here. But before I do so, I'm going to say a prayer. And uh, Leroy, it was good, good to have you joining us. Um, I'm not sure where you're joining from, but it, it's always nice to have new people. And your sentiments were exactly dead on. Um it's not the material things in life that matter. It is uh, life being lived. And less is more, guys. Remember that. Right now, you know, when you're preparing forward, think about that. You know, there's so much in our lives that we have, that we don't use, that we don't need, that we think we need. And I'll tell you, walking away from it all and downsizing to this level has been so Ah, all right. Leroy's from Indiana. Welcome. Uh, join us more often. We love having new people. And like I said, join our community. We have such an amazing group of people, very welcoming, um, inspiring, encouraging, knowledgeable. You know, some are sharing things, some are asking questions, and others are sharing. It's just really a uh, good, good space, and it's growing. So we would love to have you. Um, and it's always nice to have like-minded people joining us. You know, we've really been cultivating an amazing, I can't take credit here. I give God all the glory for what happens here. I give God all the glory for this community. Um, I am just orchestrating this, but you guys are all part of this. And as I've shared before, this community is nurturing. I love it. I love it. And from all over and all walks of life. We've got Keith in New Zealand, Carol in the UK, so many people joining us from overseas, lots of people from overseas watching, not commenting, um, missing lots of people. We haven't seen Caleb uh, or In the Kitchen with Rob. I know Rob changed his um, channel name. I got to look that back up. And um, Nicole, we've been missing a lot of people. Life took over this year. And things have gotten really fast paced. And that's what I wanted to share. We started talking about the enemy. You know, that one of the enemy's antics right now is keeping us busy. That's what was shared with me. The enemy wants us busy because busy is distracted. So keep that in mind when you are flitting from one thing to the next. I'm really conscious of that. I said last night how I was researching and the enemy took me to that place so that I'm tired today. I really believe that because um, he's going to use whatever he can to get a foot in. So pay attention to that. Anyway, I'm rambling on here. I'm going to say a prayer. Papa, I just love you and I thank you for all the miracles, all the things you're doing in our community, in our lives. Um, just be with uh, Tammy and her family. Be with Bobby and just strengthen her. Be with Kelly, Mike, and Courtney. Be with Diana and Craig. They're not here today either. Just be with them. Be with uh Jane, as she prepares for her trip to Ecuador, but also with her surgery on Thursday. We praise you for Harvey's um, healing and for uh, his mother's healing and uh, all you're doing there. And we just lift Rhonda to you and ask for extra strength for her as a caregiver. And just thank you for blessing them. Be with her grandson, Jonathan, also. And... Uh, Continue to be with Keith and Carol as things are more escalated in their neck of the woods. Just be with them, protect them, keep them safe. 
um, bless them both and extra blessings for Keith for all the nurturing and sharing he does in our community and his effort to help. And, uh, we thank you for bringing Leroy and uh, the new people that you're bringing to our community. We thank you for that and praise you for that too. Uh, we praise you for Mill's sale of her cabin. That's just amazing. Two days and boom. Thank you for, for blessing them. And uh, just thank you for blessing the mountain boy the way you have with work and his, his camper and everything and just making it clear that he was following your will. You know, the more we seek you, I know this, that the more that we seek you, the, the closer you are, the more we can hear your still small voice, the more present you become. And it's because we need that relationship with you. So my prayer is that with our community, everyone starts to feel that need and, and creates that habit and that addiction to just be with you and spend time with you. We thank you for what you're going to do for each of us this week. We thank you for what you're already done. We thank you for the abundance you're providing, the protection you're providing, and just thank you for filling us, keeping us full with our peace and our joy and, and keeping that hedge of protection over us and your children from all that's going on in our world. We lift America to you, and we know that you are going to keep our flag flying. We know that you are going to use our government's evil for your good. We just pray that you continue to uh, protect those that are seeking you and guide us, guide and direct us, give us the knowledge and the strength, the courage, so that when we're squeezed, you come out. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for all you're going to do. We love you and we ask all of this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, I love you all. I thank you for spending this time with me. I thank you for your love for Jesus. I thank you for what you do in this community and how you nurture one another. Join us in the community. Lots being shared. Lots more going to be shared. Lots of questions popping up and just lots of great stuff over there. So continue to join us there. Guys, I love you. I wish you a wonderful day and rest of your week. And may God bless you. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.